there is the fireplace, the majestic fireplace, which we salvaged from Zeno's grandfather's house. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad. I was asked by a bunch of viewers after I did my preview of some of the things I was bringing to the Florida shows to show what the booth actually set up like when I got to West Palm Beach. And I thought this is a great time to show you something that we have to consider when we're real world antique dealers. And that is that if you're doing multiple shows over multiple weeks in a similar enough area where you may get some of the same customers, how do you keep it fresh? How do you make it look different? So what we're going to do is first show the West Palm Beach setup, and then I'm going to show you how I set up a week later at the Venice show, which is two hours away. So we will have some of the same customers, and we wanted to make it look as different and fresh as possible. And we'll show how we do that after you see West Palm Beach set up first. And I'm gonna go ahead and film my space because some of you folks who saw the preview wanted to see how it all set up. Now I've sold, gosh, it's been a pretty good day. I think I've sold a couple thousand dollars worth, so it's not as much stuff as I started with. But there's the case of Bakelite, which you may have seen before. This is Bush Stadium, a fairly recent litho print. This jewelry case I've reset. I have just a few new things. The sterling enameled egg there I thought was especially nice. That came from the jeweler's wife in St. Petersburg. Black, Hole, bit of Black Hills gold jewelry there I may have shown you and some Juliana bracelets. This is a nice key wind pocket watch. And yes, they used to be wound with keys back in the 1870s and 80s. And we pull back here, there is the, uh, hello everybody. There is the 1980s sign sailboat mirror. Here's how I displayed all of the purses, the really great Lucite purse sold right away. Dresser boxes, I did get a bunch of these which are kind of fun. I sold one Devo that was a flasher view and a B-52s. No, wait, the B-52s stayed. They bought a Ringo Starr pin, but these are all original from the uh, late 70s, early 80s when these bands were new. I love the B-52s, by the way. Lots of fun, very silly, very dancey, which I'm usually not, but they could get me to do it. Elvis Costello, The Police, these are all early 80s sort of new wave era bands. Here's the dresser boxes that I showed you. Most of the jewelry you may have seen before, but this is a Sarah Coventry party pastel set in the original box that just came to me. The silhouettes here. I've had some sales of silhouettes and some of feather bird pictures. This is a big factice, which is dummy perfume, meaning that that is not real perfume in there. It's for a department store to show what the bottle looks like in a large size to get people's attention. The Mint and Queen's Beasts are with us again. Here is a trunk vase. This one is in amethyst carnival glass. Someone was telling me, one of my viewers, that they were referred to as carnation bases, which makes sense to me because carnations were a big thing to give as flowers back around 1910 when these were made. They were as popular as roses to give by at that point. But this one's nice. I believe that's a Fenton pattern, and the amethyst glass is a nice base for it, and those are popular again now because of the interest in swung glass. I had a piece of swung glass, but it sold. This was a very nice thing that was picked for me by a viewer in Nashville, and I'm very grateful to her for that. I think the dolphins are really cool. They are on a marble base that looks 1980s to me. The Hager fish also was a viewer pick. 
very grateful. I had a couple of viewers who gave me things to bring to sell, and that was really neat. The hookah guy I showed you, and the alexandrite glass, and the held paperweight. This is a Blanco Crackle decanter, and a Blanco eggplant, which came recently. And then this little bird, we see all the bluebirds of happiness and think, oh, that's an 80s thing. But look at that Pilgrim label. This was their logo from 1968 through the 70s, so this is older, and it's a nice purple. And that should be worth about $25 to $30. These sailboats with the actual spinning ship's wheels came to me just very recently. And here's that fabulous fringed lamp. It just looks great there, I think. I put it around the Weller Lore Beak because the colors are compatible, and I love that stuff. The Vienna Art Tray. The Flamingo was a last-minute addition, thanks to a viewer. Very grateful. It's always good to have flamingos in Florida, and I didn't have any, so now I do. The Greek lovers playing cards came from an estate. There was another even more risque group of gentlemen in card form. They sold already. Here's a bunch of glows in a blacklight Fenton Burmese and custard glass. And these pieces are fresh to me. I don't believe that these have been out anywhere where you would have seen them before. Neither of these two Royal Dalton ladies. The ladies don't sell like they used to, but these are earlier ones, and you'll notice the painting is much more subtle, particularly in the eyes. This one has applied flowers. I believe her name is Janet, yes, and there's the logo. And then this one... I will take a look at the bottom here. This one also has applied flowers, and she is Lady Charmian. Not Charmaine, Charmian is the way it's spelled, so. These two little late 19th century, early 20th century Majolica figures are sweet, and then the Yadro came from an estate in St. Petersburg. So I have a couple of different pieces of Yadra that I haven't had before. There's the Blue Jay print. The Rec Bar was in Fort Lauderdale and Key West. The one in Fort Lauderdale still exists. This is just cute in its local interest. And perfect because it's New Year's Eve. We've actually had a good crowd in here for New Year's Eve. It settled down and we've got about an hour left in the show. So it's quiet now, but we definitely had a good turnout and sales were brisk like we hoped. Alligator planter is fun. I don't think I showed that before. This one is hand-painted, made in Japan. So that's actually 1930s. Sold all but one of the farm books right away. And I brought some political stuff because there is a political memorabilia show here in February and sometimes the people come to pick here first. They may be here next month. This is Nixon for president a bobblehead from about 1960. We called them knotters back then. Then we'll pull out and I'll show you this wall of interesting stuff. There is the fireplace, the majestic fireplace, which we salvaged from Zeno's grandfather's house. They are going to tear that room off the house and be able to save the rest of the house, apparently, and there is no room for this piece, and I said I will sell it for you, and that'll be a nice uh, thing to help him out. Here's all of these puppets, that collection that I showed you. We've got the Chinese guy who I've already had someone inquire about. The Black Family. The wooden piece from Frankenmuth, and then these WPA pieces. I've got a damn troll doll. This is something that I hadn't had when I did the preview. This is Nyloke, and it's the Boxing Kangaroo Planter. It's got the impressed name on the bottom and a little bit of their logo left on the back. A whole bunch of cameras for sale. If I can help you folks, let me know. You're welcome to look. I'm just taking pictures. <laughs> Well, I'm going to let them look at the cameras, but you can see I've got it in a bunch. And then I've got the Goebel Last Supper, the company that made Hummels, made this. And I've surrounded it with a lot of that peach luster. 
as well as these really fun little glasses with the fish and the seahorses. We've got the quilt standing up. I have a dealer here interested in the stacking bookcase. If they can figure out how to get it home at the end of the show, it will go with him instead of me, which would be wonderful. The swan lamp here with the lotus shades is just a lot of fun. The Hager piece, Shakespeare. And then artwork. This fellow here is a Robert Hodgel. He was a Gulf Coast artist who died in 2002. His stuff is now being shown at the St. Pete Fine Arts Museum. I've shown this piece before. Again, this is with the political memorabilia collectors in mind. A nice old 19th century litho print of these guys trying to uh, bring a lifeboat ashore from a sinking ship. Daedalus and Icarus hiding in the back there. We've got this piece, which is a Venetian scene painted in Italy, and a guy down the way has a very similarly colored, similarly impressionistic, larger version of this. And we think it may be by the same artist. And then this is just fun. This is a signed limited edition by Christine Chagmont from about 1970, but it just had a lot of fun and whimsy to it. I think you folks saw me buy this at auction if you watch my videos regularly. But this was another contribution from a viewer. The Flamingo Restaurant from Miami Beach, Florida. Actually, it looks more like a broadsheet advertising for people coming out of the theater district. And then this is a binnacle. This was made in the Second World War. This is what Lionel, who had made toy trains, ended up doing for the war effort. Copyright 1943, the Lionel Corporation. It doesn't have its cover, but it works. And it should be worth a few hundred dollars. I've got a whole book full of various autographs. The Stetson dealer sign I thought was neat. This was something that another viewer gave to me to bring. When it rains, it pours. That's the Morton Salt Girl in a clear umbrella from the 60s. And we're back to these cameras. Before we go on further with the video, I just wanted to say thank you so much for viewing. I really appreciate all of the support of the subscribers. If you click the subscribe button, it doesn't cost anything, but then you can click the bell to be notified of future videos, and you'll know when we're going to do this again. We are here Mondays and Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on a regular basis, and we do extra content on our live channel. You can check out the social media links in the description. So what a difference a week makes. Now we're in Venice, Florida at the Community Center. I'll be showing you video of both of these shows. They're really great shows. They're very different shows. They attract some different dealers and some different customers. And so I wanted to make my space look different too. And let's take a look at how I did that. I have a very wide space here in Venice. And so I'm able to bring a little different and a little larger stuff than we brought to West Palm Beach. And then the question is, how do we make it look different for different customers? Well, one of the first things we do is we bring some different art. So the Lewis Eye card is a piece I did not have last week. We put in some different jewelry. I have this gold necklace here. This is by Mossamore. This is a designer. It's worth a little over $1,000, $1,000 to $1,200 because it is solid gold. I also tried to group things a little differently. We have all the Black Hills gold together in one piece. This really neat hair pick from about 1920 with this Egyptological design. That's very cute. Grouping all the copper helps. We've got this neat enamel and sterling egg. And we put all the silver that we had, including coins. We did not have coins last week. We came into some coins this week, so we have those locked away in the case. We sold a bunch of Bakelite last week in West Palm Beach, so to make this case look different, I added anything else of primary color, and we're putting all the watches together now. 
So all of our watches, with the exception of one new pocket watch that you saw in the other case that I didn't have last week, are in here. So we still have a lot of color in here to attract attention. Definitely have the same purses. I thought this display was really good, and so I left it, but I also wanted to bring some new jewelry that we didn't see last week. So we have this genuine Lucite with the tag from the 70s. In fact, quite a bit of Lucite jewelry because the customer in Venice seems to like Lucite jewelry and things that are a little more showy and splashy. The West Palm Beach customer seems to be a little more name-driven. So we brought some different things that we didn't have there. Also, just the way that we mix it is different. So last time we had the Royal Dalton ladies with the Fenton glass in a very old school display. This time we're putting all the ladies together with the jewelry and the boudoir display to give it a different effect. And featuring some things we didn't have before, just came into these, these lovely feathers and plumes and fascinators all came from an estate that I went to this week, including all the ones that I have here in the Queen's Beast. This oval tray from about 1905 with the woman in the cherub is just lovely, and we didn't have that last week either, so this gives us a different look entirely. I also set the shelves lower so that it's more at eye level for women, because that's our primary customer. This chip and dip set with the pink coral white stripes I think is really cute. And that's an eye color pop so that we can draw attention to the back of the space. We also have some different dresser boxes. We put the flamingo in a surprising place with some other things that are not so flamingo-ish in order to make that look different. And then the perfume bottle, the Italian perfume, was not with us last week. But we mixed a lot of the antique looking women on the trays and things in with other feminine items to attract a different customer. The Limoges tray was not with us last week either. The nice thing with the Venice show is I have a wall here. I did not have a backing wall in West Palm Beach, so art went down low. This time we're able to make art a main feature. And so all of these presentation pieces, like the sword with the Knights of Pythias, all of this artwork is actually up at a level where art would be hung. So the chances of selling it are better, and it actually gives us a big color spot and makes it different. Now I sold a lot of the puppets that I had at the last show, so we gathered what's left in a little different way to have lots of smiling faces to draw people in. The tintype and the other photos here are very cute. These were recent additions. It's easy to add these sorts of things in as backdrops and attract different people and merchandise differently. I also got a bunch of little miniature Coke bottles and Pepsi bottles and stuff. A couple of sets of sterling medallions and coins here, including this set here. So we have that for our silver collectors. And a signed photo from Anita Bryant inside the alligator. I put some of my Florida stuff down here because I don't have a lot, but I have some. And we replenished with knives, so we actually have some different things in that case. Now when we pull out this time, what I have along the floor is some more art and a lot of toys and childhood things, heavy metal objects. These are things people expect to see on the floor at a show. I brought a Royal typewriter. We did not have that last week. I sold the other typewriter I had at the store in St. Petersburg, so time for that to come here. A bunch of blue and white porcelain. I've sold this in Venice before, so we always try to bring things that are specific to the clientele that we expect to meet. And this time we did all the uranium glass in one place and just by itself. We've got all these Fenton pieces and the bird. And we went a little tall. We went higher with the center of the booth so that it would be, again, more stuff at eye level. But the big difference you'll see in the booth this time is the furniture and the way that I've used it. I brought different furniture. I brought a whole bunch of Haywood Wakefield, three pieces, which for me doing a show booth is actually quite a lot. And I decided to display it. Last time I had the Stacking Lawyers bookcase, it sold in West Palm Beach. 
and so I decided that I needed something else for elevated display, but I decided to put books in it because a lot of people are not buying China cabinets for China anymore, but some people are using them successfully as bookshelves, and so I thought it would be interesting to show it this way and see if that might attract a different clientele. And I've already had one person who took a look at this and the stuff inside of it. So I think it's gonna work. Also, honestly, it's something with an indoor show right now with people being a little bit nervous about being around a lot of people. We wanna do things so that if they're gonna look a long time and paper is something people spend a lot of time with, they can be in an area by themselves. Over here, this little very cute oak table from about 1910, which was sort of lost in the display, is now a feature at the end cap along with this wonderful lamp and the Meissen box. We brought this guy. It's the first time he's been to a show, the Stife American Kennel Club. Next to it, we have this piece. This is another Haywood Wakefield. And yes, it's pretty covered, but you can see what it is. You can see the drawer. And because of that, I feel like it has a chance to sell here. It's a nice small piece. People can get it in their car easily. We featured the lamp differently than we did before. Brought a piece of pilgrim glass we didn't have last week, this nice deep ruby red. We added a bunch of Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola stuff. We are helping uh, the widow of a friend of ours who passed, who had a big collection of this, sell some, so this was something new to bring to the show. And we've got trays in mint condition. Century of Progress closing day. This is interesting, and also the Sulak Centennial Exposition. So there's different things in here, but again, it's more about how we try to put it together to make it look different. So this little table, which last week was sitting on the floor, kind of unnoticed, is now a feature piece. I like the mirror and the texture in it. And we were able to feature Pepsi trays and other things. I put a lot of the really brightly colored advertising things all in one place because Coke and Pepe, Pepsi collectors tend to be pretty serious about this stuff. So we have it all where they can see all the fresh stuff in one place. Over here, I decided to take a bunch of things that were on the floor at West Palm Beach and make more of a nautical display up where you can see it because a lot of people from New England come to this show, a lot of people who are interested in the open ocean because Venice is one place where there aren't outer islands. It opens right to the Gulf of Mexico. And so people tend to decorate with a nautical flair here because a lot of people are near the water here. I also brought this really incredible Jake Edwards carving with the woman and her face in this fantastic burl. So this is how we make it look different. I've brought in the Haywood Wakefield turntable that top spins on this piece, and it's got the rattan wrapped legs, which is something that I think would do well in this area. Also this Stangle pair, this wonderful 1950s Stangle shell vase, and this cornucopia vase to go with it. So we definitely have our nautical going here. And that was deliberate. We really wanted to make something that might attract people who decorate. I put this up in a way that it's never been before. I've never had it at eye level, but it's a really cool dartboard. And I think that we might have a customer for that here. I've sold things like this here in Venice before. We're featuring the regional art. This was done about 30 miles up the road by someone who's considered, he's passed now, and Robert Hodgel is considered a good listed artist who's collectible in this area. At the same time, we put in the covered bridge because, again, we get a lot of New Englanders. This was painted here on the Gulf Coast, but it was from someone who had retired from the Northeast by the name of Firestone. We've got our WPA puppets up there. We sold the Chinese guy and some of the other big puppet sets, so I wanted them to be up where they could get noticed. And then this piece of tramp art I finally got in the, the display. I did not take this to West Palm Beach. You know, sometimes you hold things out deliberately in order to have something different. And then I have a little cluster of Alaskan stuff. Strangely enough, I've sold Alaskan here. I think that Alaska holds a certain beguiling nature for people in Florida because it's so different from here. 
And so there are people who collect Alaskana down here. So we've got the carved totem, the Yadro figure in the original box, the Alaskan Jade dog sled team, and I put it in front of this crazy snowy owl looking three-dimensional cutout here. Some bone dishes, so we did try to figure out some ways to get some different things in here, but we also have a lot of things that people might have seen last week, but they're all in different places, and that's the point, is to mix some new merchandise in with things that you carried from the last show and set it up in a completely different manner. And we will see what the result of all of this is, but I feel good about it. I think it turned out well, and I'm excited to see who comes out and what they find to buy. And I guess it's working because I just made my first sale of the morning and it was the very large covered turkey platter that was up here. It was something I hadn't brought to the last show. It was in a very prominent position and another dealer is buying it, which is wonderful because he has more of a clientele for that than I do. So I'm very excited to see it sell. One more thing I just wanted to show, my friend Janelle had this and it's just so amazing with all the cruel work. It's right out of the late 60s, early 70s. Peace and love. And I just have never seen anything quite like that. That's one of those hippie folk art things and you don't see a lot from that era because the hippies weren't really about keeping possessions. So it is something really unusual and probably worth 150 to 200 dollars. My friend Susan always says, touch it and it sells, and she does estate sales and shows, and she's right. If you move things around and put them where people can see them, stuff goes. <laughs> and a good example of that, I'm waving to a friend of mine who's walking by, a good example of that is, well, we sold the piece that was on top of there. We got this up at eye level. It is replaced another item that was there, the sword, that sold. I've sent information about this piece of art with three different potential buyers. The big heavy binnacle that was here has sold, so it really does make a difference how you display things. If you bring things up that haven't been seen or you recast them in a new light, people see them. My favorite part was the binnacle because the people who bought said, oh, this is great. You didn't have this when we saw you last week. And it was right there in the booth last week. So that just goes to show you, you have to redo things so that people spot different things than they saw before. So I hope that gives you a little insight as to what we do to make things look fresh and how we change the booth between shows. It's an adventure to see what will sell where. And when we have good stock, we want to take it everywhere but we also want it to go and part of the trick of that is to make it look like it's something that the people who are seeing it have never seen before. And we are having people come in the door, so I will be showing you this wonderful show later. I will get to film after this, but we are now officially open. You can see the people streaming in. This is a wonderful show. You can see that there is a lot of fun to be had here. So. Join me soon. I will have videos from all of the shows I'm doing in Florida as I'm able to produce them. And I look forward to showing you how much fun we're having here. And maybe you'll see something you really love. In the meantime, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Check me out on the social media links you see below. Check out my live channel. I will be doing some live content, hopefully from some of the shows, if we can get one that actually has good reception and we have an estate sale coming soon. We'll have a lot of fun things to show you. So take care and bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.